Good morning. It is a very nice day today out there. Very nice. We have three or four announcements this morning, some things coming up. Uh, uh, tonight's no service here. It'll be trunk or treat at Zach Rogers Park. Uh, if you're doing a trunk, you need to be there at five to get set up. If not, everything else is at six. And this is not just about candy. This is also an outreach. It's an opportunity to speak to people and witness to people. We talked about Sunday school this morning about the courage you need to do that. And uh, Paul was the one that needed courage because he was being crucified, but yet he was on the front line witnessing all the time. So it's an opportunity there. And then uh, Friday night, this Friday night, 7 o'clock, ladies' night uh, here at the church, uh, bring a dressing and two yard sale items. <laughs> Just a minute. Just, hang on. Hold on. Bring, two, uh, bring a dessert and two yard sale items. Okay. <clears throat> I should have put them on to start with. I, I knew that. Then uh, Saturday, we have Friendsgiving, uh, high school senior through age 25. Uh, uh, come and bring a, bring a friend to church, 6 p.m. here. Uh, food is provided, correct? Okay. And uh, thank you, and that's all the announcements. Let's, uh, let's pray, if you will. Father God, thank you for... Thank you for your blessings, Lord. Most of all, thank you for your son that died so we would have blessed hope, Lord. God, we ask your blessings today on his service, God. Be with Brother Jerry as he speaks to us, Father God. Be with our praise team, Lord, as we try to worship you in song, Father God. We love you, Lord. We thank you, and we ask it all in your name. Amen. There's so many times in life where we go through trials. And sometimes trials bring pain and suffering and worry and anxiety. I know our Sunday school lesson this morning, we've been studying the book of Luke. And one of the passages that we read this morning was, do not worry. So it brought a thought back to my mind. How many times do we worry about things that are so useless. I'm guilty. And I am also guilty for jumping on that bandwagon of negativity. Because I want to complain about it with it. I'm so Miss Mary's point nurse if I am. Me, I am. But you know what? Just like we know that hope and encouragement that we have in Jesus Christ... The world around us needs to know that too. We don't need to be that one that jumps on the negativity wagon. God gives strength in our time, hard times. And we have to look for him for our answers. And I'm just going to share a little bit of hope and encouragement. We have a high priest sitting on that throne this morning. That we can go to any time we face trouble. Anytime. He's there. And he's approachable. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. That's why we have trials, to perfect our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. He's in this place today. And I don't know what you brought in here with you today. No matter what trial that you're facing. Because we all face them. This, we're, we're not promised for everything to be roses. We're not. But we as Christians have got to rise above it. And we've got to show the world that hope and encouragement. Jesus. Jesus is the answer. Well, let's worship him this morning. Thank you, Jesus.
come this morning declaring that. Lord, you are our peace. You are our beginning. You are our end. And God, you never leave us. So as we come this morning, Lord, we've declared it to you in song. And Lord, we declare it with our hearts that that's who you are to us this morning. And Father, for any that may be watching us online or any in this room, Lord, that are destitute or discouraged or, Lord, just cannot believe that any longer, we declare it with our brothers and sisters right now. You are. You are life, and you are that that we are. So we declare that, and Lord, we believe that. Now, Lord, as we look into your word right now, we declare this morning that your word will speak to us life, that your word will declare who we are in you, and we'll believe that, Father, and then walk with you in that word. In the strong name of Jesus, we declare it, and we call it done. And all the church said, Amen. You may be seated this morning. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Boy, you're singing so well. Thank you, Trina. Worship team. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's good to see you again this morning. I hope you've had a good weekend so far. Amen. amen. If you had a good weekend so far, say amen. amen. If you hadn't, you need us to pray, say, oh, me. It's okay. <laughs> we'll just believe God with you, and we'll declare that this morning. Hallelujah. I just want to echo what uh, Jim was saying more this afternoon. I, we were looking forward to, to being with you this afternoon. I want to, you know, there's nothing like just being who God called you to be. Whether that's enjoying a cup of coffee, or eating a piece of pie, or whatever it's doing, or just sitting out at the park where it's cold and you wonder why am I, you're there because God's got you there. So it's going to be a great afternoon. I'm excited that you're going. And Joan and I are disappointed. We, Wanted to be there with you, and we, uh, she had a relative pass away, so we're going to leave after church today, headed to Pennsylvania, so pray for us. Uh, what are you doing going up there, Jerry? Well, that's where I met this gal. Uh, I was thinking this morning, and somebody was asking me, uh, when I was 17, I was called into the ministry, and so I thought, well, I need to go to college. I need to learn some word here, so... Uh, I went to New York to college, but before I left, my mom... I uh, said, well, you need to go say bye to your Granny Emmons at Butler. And so we drove up, uh, I think, on a Saturday or something. And uh, many of you probably know my Aunt Ruth and Uncle Jack. Uh, was, she was living with them. And I'll never forget, I, I, I hugged Granny. She was this beautiful little quiet lady and hugged her. And she said, son, what are you doing going to New York? And so I had to tell her, you know, well, Granny, this is what I feel like God's saying. And, and she hugged me and said, well, I'll be praying for you. You know what grannies always say, good, good things. But I'll never forget, she looked me in the eye and she said, son, I only got one thing to say to you. And I said, what's that, granny? She said, don't bring one of them Yankee girls back down here with you. <laughs> so with trepidation and fear, I brought one. <laughs> and when granny met her, she loved her. <laughs> so Joan was safe. So we have to go. Uh, there, so be praying for us and pray for her family this morning uh, as we travel and as they have to walk through what some of you have already walked through and having to let somebody go that you love. Well, this morning, boy, I'm just amazed how God speaks. Trina, you were just hearing from the Lord. Trina's already preached. I'm just going to add a note to it, and uh, uh, then we'll, we'll do what the Lord wants us to do. Uh, but, you know, it, it, we always, anybody felt any stress this week? The rest of you hadn't felt any? Come here and lay hands on me. I need you to... <laughs> 5.30 this morning, Jim was telling me, I sent the guys an email when we found out saying, hey, we won't be able to stay this afternoon. Jim thought I wasn't going to be able to come this morning, and he was panicking. You know, what do you do? Well, I got one of those calls at 5.30. One of our churches in Mobile that I oversee, the pastor was going to be out of town and had somebody scheduled to preach at 5.30. They called and said, we're going to the hospital, so I'm scurrying around trying to find a preacher. So, Jim, I understand wherever you are, and we did. It's all good. But, uh, you know, stress is a part of life, isn't it? Now, how we handle it makes a great difference. And uh, I, I was thinking this morning, you know, we, sometimes stress is in self-induced. Sometimes it just happens, doesn't it? And uh, But... God's Word has much to say about that, so I want to talk to you this morning about it in just a minute. But I was reminded that last night I was looking at some things that came across uh, a story that somebody had given me a long time ago. There was a, a young couple, and they had a beautiful son, 
And uh, when that little guy came up to the altar a while ago, I thought he was going to get saved, and y'all took him out too quick. Uh, but they loved their son, and so Mama was having him learn to play the piano, and she thought to inspire him, uh, there was a great pianist named Paderewski. He was coming to their town, so she bought tickets for them to be able to take him and let him see this man who was just such a phenomenal on the piano play, and, and so they were there, and they were sitting there, and all of a sudden, the concert was just about to start a couple of minutes, and uh, she looked around and thought, well, where is her son? And about that time, she heard a piano go, dun, 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 dun. And she looked up in horror, and her son was sitting on the stage on the piano stool, this huge grand piano, in front of all these people playing Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. And before she could do anything, Paderewski himself, the, the great pianist, walked out and stood over the little boy, and he said to him quietly, don't stop, keep playing. And he took his left hand and started playing the bass line of that song, and then in a minute he took his right hand and started playing, and it was an incredible blending of a little guy and a master and the simplicity and the complexity of that song. And, and when they got through, of course, everybody just stood and gave them a standing ovation. And, but I want you to understand this morning, as I was looking at that uh, yesterday again, I thought, you know what? That's exactly what God says to us. Don't stop. Keep going. You know, there are those times in life when you don't feel like that, do you? Uh, you know, you just want to stop because you just wore out or you want to stop because you don't know or you want to stop because you're mad or whatever. But don't you look with me this morning, if you will, and uh, actually we could do a whole series here, uh, but we won't get there yet. But in Psalm 23, you know it, you probably don't even have to turn to it. If you don't know it, it's okay. But David is writing here and in, in, in on into life, and he's talking about the Lord being our shepherd, and, and we, we know that part of the scripture. Uh, but I'm talking to you this morning about how to relieve your stress in this one particular area. And as I was praying for the church this week and praying for some of you individually, uh, the Lord just, I, I was struggling on what I, I needed to speak to you. But I know in this morning after hearing Trina and us worshiping, I know God wants to speak to some of us in this room, all of us, but in particular to some of us in this room about how we can overcome the stress of indecision. You ever been there? Well, I don't know, should I? Well, God's word has something for you this morning to hear about that. David is writing in Psalm 23, and of course you know that scripture, and uh, the brothers will, will put it up for us there. If not, you can read along your Bible, your neighbor's Bible. And David simply says, that. well, not simply, it's powerfully, but it is so simple too. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me, what? Come on, help me. He leads me by... Still waters, right? He what? He re. He guides me. Okay, I want you to stop right there. I want us to talk about now. Now we understand and know that God loves us. Amen. Amen. We know that He has a plan for our lives. He's looking after us. He hasn't. Nothing takes Him by mistake. Uh, we can go back up here and look at these first few verses and. And, and get an answer to our worry and, and to what we should do in business and how we handle our damaged emotions and all those things. But this morning where I felt like God wanted to speak to us was about this thing of indecision and knowing what God's saying to us. You know, life, life's a series of decisions, isn't it? And according to how you make your decision as to how you're going to live, whether you're going to live happily or whether you're going to fail. You know, you make good decisions in life you're going to do well. You make dumb decisions in life, pardon me for being plain, but what happens? You'll fail. I mean, that's just life. And if you don't teach your children that, you should. They need to understand that. Decisions are important, aren't they? We make our decisions, someone said, and then that decision makes us. So I want you to look with me this morning, and because every decision we make has a consequence, uh, and because we're human beings, which, which means we might make a mistake along the way, I was talking about Joan in the beginning. I tell people I've made a lot of bad choices and mistakes in my life, but I know there's two that I've made good. One was accepting Jesus, and the other was getting her, talking her into marrying me. But there's some others that didn't work out so well for me and some that I made 
you know, my own choice and what have you that didn't help. And so we need to understand. I wish somebody taught me this all these years ago. Maybe they tried to, and I just wouldn't listen. And maybe that's been the same with you. But I want you to, to listen to me today. If you're facing the stress of indecision, then I've got something for you this morning. And maybe it's, you know, should I hold on or let go? Should I take that job? Should I take that tra- Should I buy that house? Should I marry this person? Should I pursue this degree? Should I invest? The, whatever that is, they're all decisions, aren't they? You made some decisions this morning. Can you think of any? You made a decision on what you had for breakfast. Nah, Jerry. No, you made a decision. Look at what you got on. You made a decision to wear what you got on. You made a decision to come to the house of God, which was a good decision. We've already, life is full of that. We make decisions all over, don't we? And, and the Bible says that we have to understand that because the stress of indecision, it'll get to you. Trina was saying this morning, even to the point sometimes we start complaining about it, don't we? And it's our own decision that might have got us there, but we're still, as somebody said, belly aching to God about this woman you gave me. You remember in the very beginning when God comes to Adam and Eve and they've done what he told them not to do and God looks at Adam and he says, son, and Adam says, the woman made me do it. Remember that? They made a decision. But that husband said, she's the one that made me do it. And God looked at Eve and she looked at the serpent and he said, it's a decision that we make, right? So this morning, I want you to look with me. <clears throat> David said, he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. James chapter 1, we won't go there. I've got a lot of scriptures for you this morning. You can jot them down and read them later. But he says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And if you look at that in the original, the Greek word for unstable there literally means staggering like a drunk. Now, if you've ever been in that place or you've had somebody that you knew or fam- that, that you want, that's, that's what indecision does. We can't make up our minds about what we ought to do. And when you can't make up your mind, you're going to stagger through life, bouncing off walls just like the pinball off a pinball machine, trying to figure it out. And probably all of us have been there at least to some degree. Some of us have a lot of degrees there. But we have to understand God's going to handle it for us if we'll listen to him. Man, did I do the right thing? And even after you make that decision, right? You're, you're second guessing yourself and trying to figure it all out. And how do I get there? So even once we make a decision, sometimes we worry about it, right? But I want you to look with me this morning and understand that there's an answer, there's a medicine, there's an antidote, there's a fix, whatever term you want to use to understand that that you can not have to walk through that kind of stress about making decisions. Now. Psalm 23 declares that there. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. Why? For his name's sake. See, the answer to indecision, and I'm not telling you anything you probably don't know, but I'm reminding you of it, is that you've got to understand you need to let God guide you. Well, Pastor, I need to ask him whether I had Rice Krispies or Bran Flakes for bread. No, I'm not talking about that. But those things that are going to matter in life to you, we need to let the Lord guide us in that. Or again, we're going to be staggering like a drunk trying to figure out, did we make the right decision or or what have you there? He's going to do it. He's my shepherd. I don't have to want, the Bible says. He's going to take care of me. He's going to do all those things for me. He not only uh, loves me, he leads me, he protects me, he directs me, and he'll guide me through life if I'll trust him. And please, some of you are older than I am, some of you are younger than I am. Understand, I'm still learning this lesson too. But let me encourage you this morning to know the good thing in life is to let him lead you. Not somebody else, not your feeling, not your emotion, not what you think, or even what somebody prophesied to you. If they did, that's okay. But the word of a prophet can be judged as well to understand and confirm. So know that we need to know that. And he says he'll guide us what? In paths of righteousness. He's going to do that for us. And you know what that means? That just means he's going to lead us in the right path. Well, should I go to Alabama or Auburn? I don't know if either one of those really matter to God, but if he wants to lead, he's going to guide you. He might send you to a school you don't like. I had no idea when I said I need to go, God will learn more about you, that I would wind up in Lima, New York, at Elam Bible Institute and College. And, but that's what God had for me. So we have to understand, again, he's going to do it. Now, why then... If he will help us do that and guide us, why is it so hard sometimes 
to know what he's saying. Anybody ever have that problem? Man, I think, is this what God said? He wants you to know more than you want to know. He wants you to know what he wants you to do. Why? Because he's your father, and he's a good father, and he loves you. And when you were born, he had a custom design for your life. And you need to understand that this morning. He says he will guide us. He'll do it. Now, you say, well, Pastor, man, I tried it. I'm telling you, it's just not. Well, you've got to ask him not just to lead you, but then to guide you and to take you there. And sometimes it can be more confusing than ever, can it? And you're not going to ever figure it out. Why is it knowing, why is it knowing that? Why, how is it so difficult, Jerry? God play games with me? Is he doing? No, you just got to understand. You've got to know that you want to know his will more than you want to know your will. And let him guide you into what he wants to guide you in. Now, the problem, one of the problems, and I think one of the main ones is here, that we often look for the wrong thing when we're trying to find God's will. And I want to help you this morning because I've stumbled through some of this and other, many others have, and I want you to know you don't have to go there. And if you've done that today, we're going to help you bring some healing and reconciliation so that you're going to follow God. You know, one of the problems is we look for the wrong thing when we're trying to find his will. You know, some of us want that, you know, someone's called it a mystical approach. You know, we want that feeling. Oh, God, just let me feel those goosebumps. And it just sort of, if God, yeah, that's God. Well, you better be careful. Now, not to say that God can't do that, but he doesn't always do that, does he? Oh, there's one a more logical approach, you know, just uh, somebody's going to give you a recipe, a formula, five steps to follow and how to pray, and it'll just happen. God doesn't always do it that way, does he? And then there's some of us that, uh, you know, we just want a magical approach. Just some fantastic sign. When we walk out of church today, across the skies, read, thus saith the Lord, marry Susie. Susie, did you hear that? And now, if God does that for you, great. I've never been able to get him to do that for me. But you can't count on that. That's not exactly where we need to be. And all I don't know about you, but all these things, and others probably you've tried, they just make it more frustrating. But I want to follow Jesus, Pastor. I know you do. And I want to help you do it this morning, and I want to help you maybe simplify it and understand what we got to do here, and, and how do we let him guide us on that right path? Well, there's, there's several things, and I'll give it's probably more than this, but I'll give you these this morning. Number one, you got to admit you need somebody to guide you. Now, brothers, it's been said of us that we never ask for direction. Men just don't do that. I don't know if that's true or not. I think I do, but I'm not sure. Maybe, sisters, how are we? Don't answer. That's okay. You're silent. We've got to admit and we've got to understand that, that we need somebody to guide us. And, and that's tough for us, isn't it, sometimes? Hey, because, I mean, I'm, I'm a man. I know I'm going to take care of things. I know I'm supposed to do I'm going to do this. But sometimes we don't know what we're doing, do we? Now, now David, as he writing here in Psalm 23, he likens Jesus as our shepherd, our father as our shepherd, and us as Sheep, well, let, let's just uh, talk about it for just a minute. You know, uh, not only is it not in the nature of a man to stop and ask for directions, sheep by nature tend to wander and to get off the right path. Sheep don't see really good. And they don't know if they're walking up to the edge of a mountain and about to fall off or if they're about to walk into the... They're just sheep. They can't see really good. And they don't listen really good. Are you saying I'm like a sheep pastor? Well, I, no, I didn't. David did. But we have to understand, sometimes we, we walk and he likens us to that, doesn't he, that, that we're like that. You know, there was a song years ago by a guy named Frank Sinatra, and he sang it, and it was everybody enjoyed the song, and the title of it was this, I did it my way. Boy, I'd like to say in my life, I did it Jesus' way, but that's not always true. But, but here it is, sheep don't see well. They have poor vision, as I've said to you. They need a shepherd. That's why the shepherd was there to lead those sheep and to guide those sheep. And, and, and as we're that way, as human beings, we can't see the future. Do you know God made you in such a way that you can't really see the future? Well, Pastor, I, no, you can't define and declare. The, I know there's a prophetic word that comes at times. But we're not made as people to say, man, I know what's going to happen. Yeah, I can say five years down the road, and there's nothing wrong with, and, and we're in a, a, a place now where for the last 10 or 20 years in leadership, we're teaching leaders how to have a five-year plan and a 10. Nothing wrong with looking at those things, but you don't know the future. And God made you like that. 
They say, well, I do, Jerry. I know I'm going to heaven. Well, I hope so. That's good. But what are you going to do between now and the time you get to heaven? You've got to understand, you need someone. You need a shepherd. You need somebody to guide you and lead you and teach you and direct you because you're just like sheep. We don't see and we don't hear. And if we do, we don't want to do what they want us to do sometimes. Come on. So we have to understand that. We don't see very well and we don't listen very well and we just need to be able to say, you know what, God, I need your help. I can't figure out this problem with the plant, with that machine. I can't figure out it work. Lord, this, what, well, how can I do, Father, this person that's working for me, Lord, I love them, but I want to slap them and I want to fire them. Lord, help me here. He'll help us in all those decisions. If we'll just admit, number one, we've got to have a God. You with me? God, I need your help. You know, some people say, well, you know, Jerry, I've asked him to, but he won't ever speak back to me. You know, maybe it's not that God's not speaking back. Maybe you're not listening. Maybe you got your hearing aid turned off, huh? <laughs> the problem is I don't think it's not that we're listening. We just got to decide, I want to go this way. And God said, no, I want you to go this way, son. Well, if that's the way he wants me to go, whether I like it or not, I need to go that way. And he has purpose, and if I will do that, he'll guide me in what? Paths of righteousness. What for? His name's sake. So that we can declare that. So you've got to understand, to get rid of the stress of indecision and not knowing and how to go, oh, what do I do, Father? Admit you need him to help you, and he'll do that. You with me? Proverbs 14 says this, There's a way that seems right to man, but in the end it leads to, your Bible might say, destruction or death. And we, you've probably been there. You, you made a decision you thought was right, and later you regretted that decision about whatever that thing was. Psalm 25 says he guides the humble in what is right, and he teaches them his way. That word humble means we need a guide. So if we're going to get over this thing that Trina was preaching to us about this morning, if we're going to get over that frustration and that anxiety and that indecision, then we've got to, first of all, determine and understand, you know what, I can't do this. God, I need your help. I've got to have you in this situation. And right now, where we are as a church, we've got to ask God for some. You know, if we did a poll, we'd probably say, well, this is the pastor I want, and it probably would be none of us would be alike. But we've got to understand what God is saying to us, amen, and trust him that he's going to lead us and guide us. Number two, if, if we're going to get out of the stress of indecision in our business and our home and our church or whatever it is, we've got to understand not only we've got to admit we need a guide, we've got to ask for faith directions, in faith for directions. So it's one thing to ask for directions, it's another to ask in faith. Because you know what, when you ask God, he's going to answer. Now, he may do it through a prophetic word, or he may do it through somebody in the lobby talking to you after church, or he may do it in your prayer time, or he may do it as you read your scripture, and that's a whole other story there. But he will do it if you ask him in faith. See, there's been a lot of times I've said to Joan, honey, what would you like? And she'd tell me, it's okay, that's good. I didn't really want to do that. As a matter of fact, this morning, we were packing the car. Do any of you brothers and sisters ever pack your cars different than each other? And I said, no, don't put that there. Well, why am I putting that there? <laughs> If you're going to get over your indecision, you've got to admit you need somebody to guide you, and then you've got to admit, in faith, God, I need you to direct me. See, we can say it and not mean it, can't we? And we've got to understand that Jesus said what? Ask, and you'll receive. Seek. Come on, knock, and it'll be open to you. What's he saying there? Ask. You've got to ask, son. Daughter, you've got to ask. Grandpa, you've got to ask. Mom, you've got to ask. Dad, we've got to ask. Church, we've got to ask and believe God here that he's going to help us. He said he would. James says, again, we could read that whole book there in one. If we want wisdom, if we want to know what God really wants you to do, ask him and he'll gladly tell you. For he's already ready to give a bountiful supply of wisdom to all who ask him. But if you don't ask in faith, don't expect the Lord to give you any solid answer. See, there's a difference in asking and asking in faith. God, I don't know how you're going to say this. I sure know I can't do it. But if he says this is what we're going to do, understand you can't, but him in you, you and him together, you're going to get it done. And it's going to be a blessing. God's going to take care of that. You with me? Come on. Hallelujah. He'll give us wisdom. If we'll just ask him for it, he's going to help us with wisdom and every way we need it. Have you ever asked God for something and didn't expect to get it? Yeah, you have. Oh, you're being presumptuous? No. There's been a lot of times I've asked, but I knew God wasn't going to do that. Hey, I mean, why would he do that for me? I mean, I've made so many mistakes. 
when you ask, again, how are you getting rid of this indecision and the stress and the frustration it brings you? You're asking him in faith, God, I don't know what it is you want me to do. I don't understand. And he says to you, God, wow, I'm not, I don't have the tools. I don't have the money. I don't have the education. Whatever those things are. But if you ask in faith, he's going to answer you and it's going to work. See, the reason you didn't get it is because you, didn't, you weren't believing for it. There was no faith there. What we want is God just to go tip and it's done, right? And he so often doesn't do that. He leads us in some places that we need to go that we don't want to go. You with me? God, I want you to give me wisdom. I want you to help me make the right decision. But we really don't expect him to do that because we think it all depends on us. And and after all, men, we know, right? God, I'll ask you, but Lord, I know we need to do this. No, you don't. Sometimes God has another way of doing things. There is practicality. But God has another way of doing things. So you need to, number one, admit you've got to have a guide. I need a shepherd. I need somebody leading me because I can't see and I don't listen and I'm a little stubborn and sometimes I just get off on my own. I need God. I need the Holy Spirit to lead me and guide me. And then I need to believe when I'm listening to him and asking him, I'm asking in faith, Lord, I mean this. My money, my assets, my home, my ministry, all those things, Lord, I lay at your feet. Teach me, guide me, and help me to understand. See, he stays up all night anyway, so you shouldn't have to sleep. Understand, he's going to take care of you. Number three, how do you, how do, you do it? My, my, before I go there, my pastor used to tell me years ago, he'd say, son, you know what wisdom is? I'd say, no, sir, what is it? He, he would say, it's God's knowledge properly applied. I said, brother, let's explain. He said, you don't have to explain. You just, it's God's knowledge. And when he, apply, when he speaks to you through his word, you just obey it. If he speaks to you prophetically, you obey it. If you just know in your spirit that's what he's saying, you obey that by faith. Number three. I've got four thoughts here. I'm going to give them to you and we'll get through here. You not only need a guide. Number two, you need to ask for faith and ask for direction in faith. And then number three, you need to listen for him to respond to you. How many of you know a good father answers his son? A good dad's going to always tell you what it is you're asking him about. Now, right now, in this room, and Lindy and my brother in the sound booth was telling us sometimes we have a problem with the mic, the wireless, it goes out and you know, it drops. And, and right now in this room, there's more radio waves, cell phone. If we could see what's in this room, it's just everywhere, everywhere, which is probably part of our problem, guys. So turn your cell phones off, would you? No, you don't have to. But all those things are there. There are messages going across this room. Some of you may be texting one another right now. In Jesus' name, stop. (laughs) Okay? You can't see it, but it's there. Are you with me? Yeah. A a radio, a radio, if you turn your radio on, it what? It's going to pick up reception of the station that you punch in. Why? Because that radio was made, created, ordered, and done that way so that the creator of that radio could tell it pick up these waves. And it works. You remember the first transistor radio you ever got? Some of you that are old enough? What an amazing thing that was. That radio will pick up. It'll receive the reception of, of what it's been trying to do because it was designed, it was made that way. You see, God designed you for a lot of things, but the main thing he designed you for and me was that we would hear his voice. Oh, Pastor, I have so much. I know you do. You struggle with it. But listen, that doesn't mean he didn't design you that way. He designed us so that we would hear his voice. And you, there is a receiver within you that was designed to receive from him and hear from him. And you know what happens there. You start doing certain things. The Holy Spirit begins to speak, whether it's conviction or whatever. You can receive that thing because he's designed you to do that. Out of all the creatures God made and put on this earth, you know what? We were the only ones that have an ability to tune in to God and to hear what he says. That's who we are as his children. Now, he didn't design us to know the future. If we did, we'd mess it up. My brother used to say, if we could figure God out, we'd put him in a bottle and start selling him on TV. He didn't design us that way, but he did design us that we were able to hear him and talk. Do you know this morning, you have the authority and the ability and the method to talk and communicate with the most powerful thing this universe has ever seen. 
Now, I don't mean the White House. I don't mean Congress. No, the Lord. You got that ability. It was, it was put in you. Look at your neighbor and say, why don't you listen, Joan? <laughs> Come on, some of you didn't do that. He's made us so that we could hear what he says. Well, why do I have so much trouble, Pastor? I know, I understand you. I'm with you. But you've got to understand that you need to say, Lord, I need you to guide me. And then I need to, in faith, say, okay, I, I didn't think I'm going to go that way, but then I'm going to listen for what you say to me, and he's going to speak to you. See, some of you may be saying, this, you know, Pastor Jerry, I, come on, I know it, man, but I'm just, I don't hear God. Well, can I suggest to you, maybe you turn your receptor off. You never establish that relationship. Oh, you know about him, and you know who he is, and occasionally, but you, there's not a connect there. You see, if Joan and I don't talk, if we don't communicate, if we just get busy when we're younger taking care of our kids and doing all those other things, do you know one of the phenomena in our culture today is that people that get to the empty nest are divorcing more than ever? And what they're saying is, you know what, we don't know each other. And the reason is because we've turned our receptors off. It's all about the kids and it's all about, and those things are important, but we've got to be able to communicate. So maybe this morning, if you're not hearing from God, you've turned your receptor off, man. What do you mean, Pastor? We'll talk about it really quickly. You're, and not only have you turned it off, you don't even know where it is anymore. You've gotten away from it. Or maybe God's on channel 5 and you're on channel 3. Whatever that is, you've got to understand that you've got to listen for God's response. But to do that, you've got to be in touch with him and let him know what it is that you're saying. Job said in his writings, Job 33 verse 14, God does speak sometimes one way and sometimes another, even though people may not understand it. He speaks. And he's going to do for us what we need him to do. Well, then, okay, Jerry, simple. Tell me what channels God's on. <laughs> There's a lot of channels God's on. You're on one right now. You're hearing a pastor speak to you. It's a good way to hear from God. Come to the house of the Lord, sit in a Sunday school class or a small group class. God may use a deacon or God may use a child or God may use the pastor, uh, as wild as that may seem. <laughs> He may use them. There's a lot of receptors that God has using for us if we'll just understand. He, he's given us a compass. It's the consciousness within us, the God consciousness that says, you better listen to what they're saying today. You may not like it, but you better listen, boy. You ever say that to your kids? So you don't understand this now, but you better listen to me because I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to save you a lot of trouble later on. You that are teachers probably, you practice that all the time with your students. But we've got to understand, we've got to listen for what he's saying, and we've got to stay tuned in to hear him and know that's what he's saying. <clears throat> God will use somebody maybe that's already been down the road you're going through. Some of you that are younger in this church, God may use someone older that's been there before to at least say to you, look, here are the mistakes I made. Let me tell you what's down this path. You just need to understand, if God's leading you here, <clears throat> you better know that. Are you with me? And you say, well, Pastor, I... And God can use a lot of things there. He can use a lot of, of different things there. One of the things that he uses is this book right here. If you're not reading this book, you're probably not hearing from God because you really don't know him. This is, this is God's story to you. Now, it's not the only way he speaks, but he speaks. I remember when I was younger and thought I was more spiritual, I'd always have to get a prophetic word from somebody. You know? And there's nothing wrong with that. God uses prophetic word. But I found the older I got, the more I understood that I needed to be in this word. I didn't have to bug a lot of people about a lot of things because the answer was already here. So can I say to you, get in the word of God. Read it through systematically. Get in a class. Let somebody mentor you. Be accountable to somebody that you're, you're working with so that you understand, I God, I've got to get the reception connected to you so that I can hear talking about stress this morning and I'm just telling you God wants to take that off you and let you walk in peace even through those stressful situations come on he's given us a compass he's given us a guide the Holy Spirit within him that's going to help us do that and we could stay here a long time but I just want you to understand God's going to speak to you if you will just listen you admit you need that guide you ask him in faith father speak to me and then you listen to what he's going to say he's going to talk to you you know, pastoring over the years, I've had so many people that would say, I just need to hear from God, Pastor. I say, okay, we're going to pray and believe God. And man, they're calling every prayer land. They're talking to every preacher. They're going every. They never stop to listen. What they want is somebody to tell them what they want to hear. 
And how many of you understand, God does that, but I found in my life more often he tells me things I don't want to hear. Oh, Lord, let me. <laughs> but it's for my good. Okay, let me, let me bring this down and help you here and understand. Today you may be sitting here and you may have gone through a very tough week. It may have been hard all week long. I know we're praying, our church, we're praying about leadership and what God wants to do there. And we've got to know what God is saying to us in our church. But in your business and the things you do and raising your kids, I mean, God can speak to us in so many ways, and he will. He may speak in an impression to you. Now, I'm not saying he always does, but he can do that. He can speak to you through inspiration, through ideas. People can say things, and the next thing, boy, that's God. I didn't realize that. And then you hear somebody else confirm that. So just when you leave here today, just be open to saying, Lord, I, I don't understand and I, I'm a little afraid of this, but I'm going to follow you. Speak to me, Father, and I'll do. Before Bobby and Sylvia left, we were having lunch with them one Sunday. and I was saying to them, tell me, tell me how you knew you were supposed to go to Ecuador. You know, I don't know about you, but I've been a pastor long enough. You take folks on a mission trip, and half of them want to feel like they're called to the mission field. They want to go home, sell everything, go back to the mission field. The other half say, I don't want to ever go to the mission field again. <laughs> and somewhere there in between, God wants to speak to all of us. Now, it was interesting to hear Bobby and Sylvia's story, and I'm sure you know it, I didn't know it, to what God was saying to them and how God speaks and how God confirms. But we, what do we do? We've got to admit we need somebody to speak to us. Then we've got to understand that we're going to listen uh, in faith, do what he says and listen for his response and let him speak. I've always been fascinated by the space program in our nation. And I always just thought, you know, man, they put that rocket there on that launch pad at Cape Canaveral and, you know, five, four, three, two, one, and they're gone. And they're headed to their destination. But do you know that they are constantly, those guys in that capsule and the guys back on it, they're constantly talking to one another so that that capsule can stay where it's supposed to be. If they don't connect with one another, that capsule will get off quickly. And it can get off, 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 off. See, it's the same with us. If we're not careful, that's one of the reasons church is so important. We come in here and iron sharpens iron. The love of God in this house speaks to us. We need one another in this place. See, some of you come today because God had you come to hear this message. We need to be in the house of God, not just to go, but we need it because we need one another. And God will speak to us through one another sometimes. It may be in a Sunday school class. It may be a sermon. It may be in a worship song or Trina's uh, encouraging you as she does or somebody in the lobby shaking hands with you. We need that because we can get off course. And you know what I found? If I go without praying for a few days, if I go without getting in this word for a few days, man, I start getting off course. And see, I preach long enough. I know how to do church. And some of you have been in church long enough, you know how to do church. Oh, we can be spiritual, and we, people never know the difference unless they really are anointed. But that's not what God has for us. So we've got to stay on track and understand that he will use a lot of things to speak to us, and we've got to stay in touch. Got to stay there with him. So we've got to listen for what he says. You see, the, the good news that I just read to you here is the path of righteousness also leads to the road to, to recovery. If you're in a mess in your life or you've just given your life to Christ or something happens in a business or whatever it is, you keep following him because on that path, not only is he going to lead you, but he's going to bring about the purposes that he intended no matter what hell or the enemies tried to do. And believe me, you're going to fight a fight. You know that. The enemy is going to try to do everything he can to, to divert you or destroy you, but you understand again that God's going to take you there. You may have been addicted to something or had a habit or something's been in your life, but you accept Christ now and you begin to follow him. See, so long in the church, I feel like we've got it wrong. We get people saved. We want to clean them up. No, that's not our responsibility. We bring them to Christ. Now, we can encourage and, and understand. We can teach, but they've got to hear from the Holy Spirit. And if we don't do that, then those people may not get what God has for them. So we've got to understand that he wants us to listen and not get off base, not do that. Again, that's why it's so important that this, right now that we as a body of Christ, that we're praying, God, who is it that you want to send to lead us where we're going? Because if we don't pray, we're going to be in confusion. We're not going to hear his voice. Amen. Well, I can tell you what I think this church needs. You can tell me what you think this church needs. But what we need to know is what's God saying. 
You know, what, is, what does he want here? I, I don't know if, when Pastor Scotty came, if some of you might have scratched your head about Pastor Scott. I don't know. But all I'm saying to you is we've just got to hear from heaven. And he's going to answer us. Why? Because he loves his sheep. Amen. And he knows sometimes we're not really sure, but when we submit to him, he's going to take care of us. Amen? Hallelujah. He'll turn us around and take care of us and do everything that we need him to do if we'll just listen and stay connected to him so that we can. Finally. Oh, and let me, before we get to this last point, let me give you this. Some of you may be sitting here today and think like you've gone so far, you'll never get back. God will never, you, it, you just made such a mess, you'll never get your life straight with the Father. He'll never be able to redirect you. He told you not to bring that Yankee girl back and you brought her back. And boy, now you're wondering. God's going to take care of you. If you will just, you, listen, there's not a too far gone. Amen. Come on, hear me this morning, church. We just need to understand it doesn't matter where we've been. If we will just come to him and let him speak to us and listen to his voice, he's going to bring us back. You're wrong if you think you can't get back. You can. We can't go too far. He loves his children. Is that saying? You can't do anything to make, you, to make God love you less than what he loves you right now. He'll never love you any less. And he wants to speak to you. Believe me, he loves you more than you love him. And he doesn't want to see you in stress. He doesn't want to see all the things that happen because of that, the anger and the frustration, the medication, the split families, all the things that the enemy wants to destroy us with through this thing called stress. So, let me, let me give you my last thought. After you've done all these other things, you admit you need him to guide you. You ask in faith, not just ask for direction, in faith for direction. And then you listen for what he wants to say. Then you trust him when you don't understand it. We don't always understand what God's doing. You've all been through places that you can say, oh, Jerry, I understand that one. You know, I prayed and it didn't seem to happen. I, I asked, but God seemed to say something else. See, the first thing you've got to understand is we're not God. We're his children. And just as your children sometimes don't understand, you know those really deeply spiritual words that you say as a parent when your child asks you why? And you just simply say, Come on, tell me. Just because I said so. Don't you remember how frustrated that made you as a kid? <laughs> oh, come on, just tell me why, Mama. Because I said so, son. And, and she might put a little bit of a, Because that's just the way we do things here. <laughs> we have to understand that sometimes we don't understand. You remember? Way back in the Old Testament when God sends Moses to lead the children out of bondage they've been there for years and years and years and finally Pharaoh said good riddance get out of here I want you to go and Moses takes them and here they go and they're leaving can you imagine how they feel I mean they've got some of the wealth of Egypt with them and they're going and all of a sudden what happens I mean come on the revival's here man we're dancing and shouting on the chairs and God's doing good stuff and whoo it's good and then all of a sudden here we are there's the Red Sea Moses is there. The people of Israel are there on one side. There's a mountain. They can't scale that side, that, that hillside. They look on the other side. There's another mountainside. They can't go that way either. In front of them is a sea they can't cross. And behind them now is a mad army that's changed its mind and said, yeah, we come and kill every one of you. Come on, God. <laughs> you know, man, you told me and look what I'm doing and now look what you're doing. Come on, God. Have you been there? Well, it used to be a favorite saying of mine as a pastor. Come on, God, why did you... They're there. Remember the story? Well, we know what happens. They didn't understand. Can you imagine Moses saying, listen, I've done everything you told me to do. I can hear that. Come, Boy, if I was Moses there, I know what I'd be saying. God. But what happens? God knew exactly. Before that happened, he knew what was going to happen. See, they, that's what you got to understand. God can see the future. You can't. He didn't make you that way. He wants you to live in the present, and then he wants you to follow him by faith, church. 
That way the stress, I'm not saying it's going to go. It'll leave you if you'll let it. It'll try to come back. But as long as we walk in him and understand who he is regardless, he's going to take care of us. So he's prepared. God's already got him ready for deliverance. Had he made a mistake? No, he knew. And what happened? That sea parted. Miracle of miracles. And they all walked through safely. And what happened then? Their enemy was taken. Years later, the psalmist said this in Psalm 77, verse 19. Your road led up by a pathway through the sea, a pathway no one knew was there. Can I tell you, Butler First Assembly of God, there's a pathway that you don't know about yet. God's going to lead you. We can look back at the past and say, man, that was great. This has been good. Or Ooh, that was... I'm just telling you, if we will listen to God and you will listen to him in your family and then bring it together as a church family, there's a pathway we don't know yet that if we did, it'd probably scare us to death, number one, because we don't want to get to that place where we're, we're pinned in. But number two, we could never believe God would ever do that for us. But you know what? God loves you as a church family and he's going to do whatever he needs to do to see that you succeed and that this community is blessed by you. So you've got to understand. Trust him when you don't understand and I need to close. Right now some of you may be facing dead ends. You may have lost your job. You know, Our economy right now in our nation. And listen friend, if there was ever a day that the church needed to know who she is, it's today. We've got a country that's spiraling, that doesn't know. We're making decisions about this or that or the other. You're having to make those. Should I take that? Should I not? Should they? Should this? But our, our nation's in a mess. And somebody needs to be able to stand up and say, you know what? God's going to part the Red Sea. If we just believe him and walk, God's not through with this nation. God's not through with you. But we've got to understand that. Even when we don't see a way, Pastor, our nation's in trouble. We are. But there's a way out. What that psalmist said, you, you, you had a path we didn't even know about. Can I tell you this morning, let me help you with your stress. God's got a path you don't know about. If you would just listen to him and give it to him. Proverbs 4.18, the path of righteousness is like the first gleam of dawn, shining brighter till the full light of day. This morning when the dawn first cracked, I got up about the crack of dawn. But I couldn't really see everything. I could see a little bit. And the writer here is saying the same thing. Hey, when it begins to dawn, you're not going to see it all at once. If we could do that, we wouldn't need any faith, would we? Okay, God, we know you. So we just walk, and the light becomes lighter and lighter and brighter and brighter. Hear me this morning, church. God wants to help us to understand in our own lives, never judge the path God's got you on till you get to the end. And you probably had that experience. You look back and say, man, I cannot believe God did that. I never saw that. I didn't understand that. But he was there all along. What's that old chorus we used to sing? He was there all the time. He was just waiting patiently in line for us to understand what he wanted to do. Hallelujah. So God has a plan for your life. Let me close here. I finished, but I'll close. Hallelujah. Now, you need to follow his path. It's a path of what? Righteousness. Literally, that just means the right path. A right standing. Wherever you are and whatever's going on in your life today, you need to understand that. And God will take care of you if you'll just listen. He may bring some people, some circumstances, some things into your life, but he'll take care of you. I don't have time to read it to you, but my, my life's verses are in Psalm 37. And the psalmist is saying there, God will never let a righteous man fall. If he does, he picks him up. But then he says this, I was young and now I'm old. But I can tell you one thing. i never seen righteous forsaken. i never seen their seed begging for bread. As a matter of fact, God blesses them and he will make them to be so generous, it'll be amazing. Righteous will not be forsaken. That's who God's called us to be and he's going to use us in incredible ways. Can I tell you, this church hadn't even glimpsed the greatness of what God wants to do through you and you've done some incredible things in the past, but don't live back there. Remember and let that be a light, but let God speak to you now and move on. The question is this morning for all of us, whose path are we going to follow? And what are we going to do with that? Not necessarily the path in life that we might think is right, but if it's what God said, 
he's going to do it. In the way of righteousness, there is life. Along that path is immortality. Proverbs 12, 28. This morning I want to close. and I'm going to close with a story and I won't be but a moment. But I want to pray for you this morning. And I want you to be honest with me. We have some friends in Mobile that pastor. Pastor Levy Knox is a wonderful, incredible apostle of God. There's several churches across the nation that he oversees. <clears throat> and God helped our paths across years ago. Levy was in his 40s doing an incredible job, just a miracle story of how God had brought him up in the ministry, all, all that was happening. And all of a sudden, his wife was diagnosed with cancer. And in just a very short period of time, God took her to heaven in spite of all that we were praying about. And, and again, you walk through some of that here. And Levy just he said, I trust God, but I just don't know why, Jerry. I don't. And, and again, you've asked yourself some of those questions, I know. Several years went by. Levy spoke in many places. Pastor Tommy Reed at the Tabernacle in Buffalo, New York, was a place that he preached, and he and Pastor Reed, great Assembly of God Church, were friends. And Levy went there to preach several years later. And I don't know all that happened that morning, but I know he was sitting on the, on the platform waiting to preach. And up came this lady to sing. She was in a wheelchair. And Delia came up on the stage and sang so powerfully from her wheelchair. And it touched him. He thought, my goodness, I've never heard. And if you've ever heard her, ever, you'll, you'll understand. Anyway, to make a long story short, later on, God put them together. And they later married. She moved to the Mobile area to help him pastor in her wheelchair. Beautiful lady, young, in her just her, her 40s. The story was when I think she was 17, as a teenager, on Christmas Day, she was driving somewhere and a drunk driver hit her. And she'd been paralyzed all those years. Loved God, had given her life to God, stood with God. And in spite of everything else, that girl, I tell you, sometimes she gets so excited leading worship and singing, I would be standing on the front row thinking, oh, God, she's going to get so excited, she's going to run that wheelchair right off the platform. I mean, she was an incredible, incredible lady and loved God. She had every reason to say, you didn't do. Amazing. But she loved God. And they were going through life and just their church was flourishing. God was so good to them. And Delia was just the happiest lady. And, and Pastor Knox again had a glow about him. God had just put them together sovereignly. And I don't know, probably seven or eight years ago, some of you remember the Brownsville Revival. And after that, in Mobile, we were having some services. Pastor Kilpatrick was down at the, at the uh, convention center. And one night, Levy and Delia were there. Many of the pastors were all there. And at the end, they were praying for people. And it was really about over. A lot of people had already left. And the evangelist that was there was praying for folk. And Delia came up, if I remember. I can't remember exactly the, the, the way things happened. But he just started praying for her. And, of course, Levy was there with, holding onto the wheelchair to be with her. Pastor John Kilpatrick came over, several others. And the next thing you know, one of our other pastors was happened to have his phone, his video, and Delia tried to get out of her wheelchair. She couldn't for a second. And then in a moment, Delia stood up, very weak. They were holding her. She stood up. I'm telling you today, if you saw her, you would never know she's ever been restricted to a wheelchair. That woman now runs across the stage, worshiping. God just delivered her that evening, years later, she didn't understand. Just like you don't understand some of the things you go through. And I don't know what the end result for you, for Delia, he, he brought her out of that wheelchair, but she had been faithful probably 25 years. I forget exactly. Today, I'm just saying to you, admit you need somebody to guide you. Listen to what they're saying. 
ask in faith and walk in faith and then do what God says to you to do. Stand to your feet with me. I'm telling you this morning, there are miracles in this room of you being able to walk away. You see, you don't need to wait for an Instagram or a text message from God. He's here. The Holy Spirit's here. But what He's wanting us to say this morning is just that simply we will follow Him wherever He leads, whatever He says, however He directs, we're going to follow Him. So this morning, I'm going to pray. But I'm going to ask you to do something bold. I haven't really asked you to come to the altar much. If you're here this morning, you love God with all your heart. When maybe you feel like, I just, Pastor, I can't hear. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm just, or maybe you're angry at God. Maybe you thought, God, you would have, why would you do this to me? How would you lead? Why would, I'm just telling you this morning, God wants to deliver you from that frustration, from that stress, from that fear, from all those things that are there. And that's what the enemy wants to do. Just stress you enough to get you off center. You love God with all your heart. You're a wonderful man or woman of God. But that, thing is there and you just can't seem to get through it or how to hear from God. If that's you, before we pray, I want you to come stand with me. I'm going to agree with you. Listen, I've walked in that thing too. Come on, get out of your seat right now. Come stand with me. And we're just going to pray. Today is the day God's going to clean out our ears. We're going to hear from Him. We're going to hear from heaven. We're going to know what He's saying. Come on, some of you just need to come join me here. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I know God this morning gave me this word and as Trina was speaking, I realized Lord, you're speaking to some folks because you love Butler First Assembly of God. Come on, come stand with me. Come on, it doesn't mean you're living in sin, things are bad. It doesn't mean that at all. You love God. But you're just going to hear from God this morning. We're going to believe God and we're going to respond to what He says that He's going to do for us what He said He would do. And if you're here this morning and your relationship has been broken or disconnected from Him, it's a good time right now to say, Lord, I want to hear you again. Father, I repent of everything and I stand with you. If that's you this morning, I want you to come join me. Come on. I feel like there's some other folks in this room. You, need, you just need to stand and say, I'm going to hear you, Father. Thank you. That Red Sea is not going to stop me. If you're watching this online, the same with you. We're going to believe with God for you this morning. Hallelujah. Some of you Holy Ghost filled spirit people, would you come stand with our brothers and sisters here? Come on, help me, deacons or leaders or whoever. Come stand with us. Come on, come on, come on, come on. We're going to believe God this morning. God is going to do for us what he said he would do. He doesn't deceive his children. He loves us. So we're going to pray and believe God this morning. Hallelujah. Now, church, I want you to lift your hands, and we're going to pray, and we're going to declare. Come on the word of the Lord this morning that he's going to take care of us right now where we are. Come on. Lift your voices. Father, in the name of Jesus, you that are here in the altars, pray with us. God, we just lay it all down to you, Father. Lord, our dreams, our desires, we lay them down. Father, we don't understand maybe where we've been walking. We love you and we don't understand why we're not hearing or listening. But this morning we say to you, Father, we come to the place that our hearts are for you. God, help us to hear. We no longer will be distracted, God. You're going to be with us and go with us. Lord, for those watching online in your home, the same. We believe, Lord, with you right now that you're touching people in their homes as well. We declare your glory and your majesty and your might in the lives of my brothers and sisters that they're going to hear the word of the Lord. Father, their minds are for you. The grace of the Father is theirs. Lord, no more stress. That thing is gone. God, we're going to hear what you say. We're going to declare that. my shepherd and he goes before me defender behind me I won't fear I feel Cups overflowing, no weapon can harm me. I won't fear. 
Come on, church. Come on. In the name of Jesus, sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, come on, worship before we leave this house this morning. We're going to go hearing from heaven today. Right now, Father, we thank you. Right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we declare it this morning. In the name of the Lord, we declare it this morning, Father. Hallelujah. Mm. In the name of Jesus, we're not alone. Lord, you're with us today. So we declare that right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters that stand here, for the wonderful people that stand in this congregation. Father, we believe you right now. And Lord, we declare right now, Lord, we will not walk under stress any longer. Lord, we will not allow the frustration of anything the enemy brings at us or against us. Lord, in our families, the peace of God that passes understanding. Lord, the reconciliation that we are to you and then we are to one another. Lord, you're doing that for all of us. And in our church this morning, Lord, you're going to lead us and guide us and we will hear you. Lord, we will follow you. The Red Sea will open and we will walk through. Every day of our lives, Lord, we're going to hear and we're going to follow. Father, I pray for the rest of our family today, the wonderful people that stand under the sound of my voice, that you're going to keep us and you're going to help us. We're going to walk out of this place listening in faith, following you and declaring what you said. In the name of Jesus, we call it done right now. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Now listen, before you get out of here today, you go to somebody and you say, you know what? Man, this week, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray you hear from God. I'm going to pray beyond any fear or any doubt or anything.